Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we want to take care of the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We've come to worship the Lord in the house of the Lord. We've come to praise him. We've come to glorify him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I thank God that uh, we as God's children, as we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells with inside of our hearts. Amen. It is good crowd here on a Wednesday night. I want to keep this up, okay? I like this. This is encouraging to your pastor. I can tell you right now. Amen. Praise God. The more, the better, especially when they're wonderful folks like y'all. Amen. Wonderful people like y'all. Praise God. It's always encouraging. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have Brother Scott with us tonight. I wasn't expecting that after surgery yesterday. Wow. My goodness. Amen. Praise the Lord. It might get a little noisy tonight with the children, okay? You know how it is in the side rooms and downstairs and so forth. But, amen, I, I, listen, I, I want to pack this place out with kids. And today, you know, we're trying to figure out what to do with the kids outside. We, we got a solution. Things have worked out, praise God. But, you know, I, those are the kind of problems I like to have to deal with. Overflow problems, amen. Overflow problems, praise God. Praise, good to have you tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. But I like the overflow problems, you know, trying to find more room. Praise God. Amen. Isn't that good? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We got, I got some good news today. Praise God. They got the survey done. Hallelujah. I mean, got the, they got the survey done, so we're on our way, amen, to get the drawings done, to get these things sent off and get, get, uh, get approved. So I was excited about that and some other things happened. This is really good, so I praise God for that. I need those little encouragement breakthroughs, you know, just like, Lord, help us, you know, and uh, he does. He shows up. Let's stand together tonight, okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to sing and just give God the glory. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord, to honor you and to praise you. I thank you for the body of Christ and this wonderful crowd tonight. Lord, we want and desire the presence of the Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Ghost, uh, you're welcome here in this place, Father. Lord, I just pray that we'll worship you in spirit and truth. There'll be liberty and freedom to praise you, to sing and to minister thy word tonight. Lord, we love you. Thank you for all the children. God bless them, I pray. And all the teachers uh, and for their labor of love and their sacrifice as they pour into these kids. God, bless them, I pray. Thank you, Father, for them. Thank you for the body of Christ that supports such a work as this. Giving you all the glory and praise. Bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's sing tonight, okay? Praise God. Leaning on the everlasting arms. And what a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. Verse 2, amen. And oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Everlasting arms, and what have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the ever, let me hear you sing it now, amen. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Verse 1, praise God. What a fellowship. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. And leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. on 
on the everlasting Verse 3, God. praise God. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leading on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. Leading on the everlasting arms. Leading, leading. Safe and secure from all the arms. on the everlasting heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Lean on Jesus. Amen. Lean on the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing this. I have decided to follow. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Let's sing that first verse again. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me, no turning back, no turning back, amen. Take a moment tonight, and let's just praise his name, amen. Stand where you are, just worship him, hallelujah. It's been a busy day, a busy week. Get our focus on the Lord, our mind on Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. How we love you, Lord, and we praise you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, our God and our Savior. We want to say thank you, God, for saving our soul. We want to say we love you. We want to say there's none other but the Lord Jesus Christ, that one can be saved. We give you all the glory tonight. We praise you. I'm asking your touch in every person. In the name of the Lord, strengthen them, I pray. Bless them with your presence, God. Lord, I pray for renewing and reviving in the Holy Ghost. Pray for revival. Hallelujah. I pray for the former and the latter rain. How many believe that? Amen. We want that. We desire that. And the church needs to get back to that. Amen. Praise God. Get back to the truth. Back to the word. Back to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Back to preaching the Holy Ghost. Back to Jesus. Amen. Preaching the cross. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I can feel the presence of God up here. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean to tell you, folks, you ought to just shout it out tonight. You ought to just praise him. You ought to just worship him. Praise God. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Let the world know that Jesus is Lord. Praise Him. Let heaven hear. 580 Silver Street. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Angels encompass those 
that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Oh, how we love you, Lord. How we praise you. Minister, I pray, Father, as we sing this song. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So good to us, isn't he? Amen. Sing from the beginning. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words to tell. Too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. Hallelujah. You are beautiful beyond. Just worship him. Just be filled with the holy presence of the Too Lord. Marvelous for words. Hallelujah. To wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp? ever so quietly just whisper it unto the Lord and I stand I stand in all of you I stand I stand in all of you holy God to whom all praise is due I stand stand in your presence tonight. Hallelujah. The holy presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. The holy presence of the Lord saturate this place, oh God, with your glory. The Shekinah glory. 
of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. again need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how let me sing I'm going to have you sing that first verse if you would. Amen. Praise God. Lord, I come. I confess. Amen. Bowing here. I find my rest. And without you. tonight and praise him. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need One more time, hallelujah. Worship the Lord as you sing. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you every Hallelujah. Just thank him tonight, would you? Just praise him and thank him for who he is and what he's done for you and that he's saved you, that he's washed your sins away, that he's cleansed you, that he's given you eternal life and eternal hope. Hallelujah. That he's given you Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed Lord, we love you. We worship you. We praise you, Lord, in this house. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Let us be eternally grateful. Let us have the fear of the Lord in our midst and in our hearts, God. When we recognize that the Lord is present, that the Lord is here in this place, that the Lord is with us and among us, let us reverence the Lord and have respect unto God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love and praise you in this place, almighty God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Brother Larry Hollenball, would you just pray over the church, over the congregation right now, if you would, my friend. Amen. Just pray over the congregation. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. 
Abby playing like that, I tell you, I can have you play all night. I tell you, I feel the presence of the Lord. I'm shaking. That happened. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. She's gonna, she's doing, she's going snowboarding, I think, with the kids tonight. Amen. Inside that classroom. She's got it all decked out. Praise the Lord. I love that. She comes up with all these ideas. And I tell you, I love the inspiration. I think it's wonderful and fantastic. Amen. Praise God. Church, good to have you tonight. Praise the Lord. And again, uh, happy new year. And uh, last Sunday was our first Sunday service for the new year. This is our second Wednesday for the new year. And I tell you what, I am so glad to have you in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank God yesterday everything went smoothly with the surgery for Brother Scott. Thank the Lord. Got home last night without any complications. He's, he's here. It really surprised me. He's here tonight. I tell you what. I love that kind of faith. That, amen, praise God. I love that kind of determination. Hallelujah. So praise the name of the Lord. You keep him in prayer, but uh, God to touch and God to heal. The, the children, that he rides with me on the bus to pick up the kids, and they were all concerned and wondering where he was at. And uh, they go, he didn't die, did he? <laughs> no, he's okay. They didn't understand why he had to have surgery because last week they probably thought he was fine. But uh, they, don't, they don't see what's going on on the inside there. And uh, so I, I did, uh, Brother Scott, I told them, I said, well, I said, you know, sometimes as you get older, things, you know, tear. <laughs> you know how it is, you know. And they don't know how it is. I said, you know how it is. And they don't know how it is. But anyway, praise God. Good to have him here tonight. And good to have my son with us tonight he, with a broken foot and all. Now, listen, folks, I'm going to just lay it down. No more getting sick. No more broken bones. No more surgeries, okay? This little church has gone through so much. And I tell you, folks, amen, I want you healthy for 2024. I want you better. I want you strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And I, I just want you by, amen, I know, I'm just, I'm just the best you can, amen. Stay healthy, amen, praise the Lord, because uh, I don't want you being sick, and I, I know you don't want being to be sick either, okay. Uh, Brother Bill McQueen is doing a very good, praise God. If you would like to write Brother Bill McQueen on Facebook or on um, cinnamon, cinnamon text or whatever, or a card, uh, let him know that you miss him and you're praying for him. I think he might try to plan on being here this Sunday, um, but if you'd like to do that. And uh, I call, I call, you know, Everybody, if they're sick or in the hospital or they're whatever, I'll give them a call. Or I'll shoot them a text and just make sure they're okay. And uh, But, you know, sometimes I like to hear from other brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so um, just to let you know, Jesse Martin is home from the hospital. Praise God. Got home Sunday night. And uh, praise the Lord. Continue to pray for him. And uh, but uh, doing better on the on the on the road to men's okay, and uh, to continue to pray and then uh, praise God. Um, Sister Mona, good. Keep praying for Sister Mona. She's here with us tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, Mary Henretti had surgery today on her foot as well, and uh, so remember her in prayer. If you'd like to shoot her a text or send her a card or call her up, that would be fantastic. I know that'd be very encouraging to her as well. And, uh, and I pray and hope that this surgery was a great success. And I pray and hope and pray for her that she will heal up properly and get back up on her feet and get about her life. Okay? Amen? And uh, just others that uh, just lift them up before the Lord that have just asked. I know Brother Dan Ward has been sick with a sinus uh, infection. Just praying for healing for that as well. Pray for his mom, Ruby, who have health, uh, health concerns. And then Judy also just asking for prayer. She may have to have a, a knee replacement. So lift them up before uh, the Lord also, okay? Praise God. Amen. And uh, keep each other in prayer, okay? Let me just mention to you that tomorrow night will be our first men's Bible study for 2024. We invite all the men of this church to come, and you can invite somebody to come with you if, if, if all possible. Bring your Bible, bring a workbook, bring a, a snack to share, and, um, and come on. Let's have a time. Let's get in the Word of God. Let's have great discussion. Let's uh, get into the Word, and let's grow in, uh, in, in Christ and develop in the Lord and, and encourage one another in the faith, okay? Iron sharpens iron. So we really, I really implore you and encourage you men to be there and to be faithful. Side room right here, 630 tomorrow night, 630, okay? All right, praise God. Also, uh, let me just mention to you that the Fellowship Potluck is this Friday night. That will be at the Chadwick Place from 6 o'clock to 8.30. That's this Friday, the 12th, from 6 o'clock to 8.30. Bring uh, your favorite food, whatever it might be, like we do, just like we do at the church. Bring a dessert, bring a bottle pop, just like we do here. But it's over there, Chadwick Place, behind the Social Security office, crossed from the YMCA there, okay? Just like we, same place we had this before, 
all that room there will be ours. We have reserved that, and therefore we have uh, that whole area there for a couple hours. Okay. Also, I would like to ask if some people can stay behind. Don't just take off after you eat, but if you can help us to be able to clean the place up and get it back in tip-top shape better than when we got it, okay? How about that for a good testimony and a clean testimony, okay? Don't forget to bring food, but don't forget to bring your food home if there's any leftovers and your, your dishes or your crock pots or things like that. Don't forget. There is a sign-up sheet on the back table right there. Uh, also, there is one on the foyer table. So please sign that. Give us an idea of what you will be bringing. Listen, these are winter months. It gets dark so early. It's been cloudy. It's been cold. It's been windy. But guess what? It's not as cold as it's going to get. This coming weekend, we're gonna, it's going to test our faith. This coming weekend is going to be very, very cold. Back to the Ohio winters that we're used to, okay? We've been spoiled this winter so far. Let me tell you, it's going to be very cold, but we're still having service, okay? Amen? So come on. Praise the Lord. Maybe cold outside. It'll be warm inside. Amen? Let's, can, let's be faithful, totally sold out, 2024, believing God. If you have an offering, please leave it in the baskets right here or the building fund box here. Once that tithe and offering box gets here, it has, I haven't received these yet. We're going to hang it up on the back wall, and I'll tell you that tonight why we're probably going to do that, okay? All right? Praise the Lord. Um, praise God, but thank you so much. You can give on through Givelify, any major credit card, debit card, whatever, if you'd like to, or online, that is fine, or even at the office here after service. But God bless you, amen? Praise the Lord. Everybody doing okay? Doing all right? Praise God. All right, praise God. You ready to get into the Word of God? Don't you love the Word? Yes. Why don't we do that? Let's get into God's Word tonight, and uh, praise the Lord. I love the Word of God, and we are the Berean church, aren't we? Yes. Amen, praise God. And we love the Word of God. We dissect the Word of God. Let me ask you some questions from last week. See if you can remember. Praise the Lord. Uh, who was Joash? Can anybody answer that? Who was Joash? He was the king of, of uh, Judah. That's right. <laughs> she goes, Judah. That's right. Anyway, the king of Judah is correct. Very good. Yeah, either the king of Israel or the king of Judah, right? Praise God. King of Israel was ten northern tribes. King of Judah, two southern tribes. Joash started out wrong, but he ended right. True or false? Oh. False, okay. Who was the one who taught and instructed Joash in the Lord? Jehoiada. Jeho Jehoiada. And he was what? Was he the high priest? High priest. That is correct. Joash started out right, but after jo Jehoiada died, he began to compromise. True or false? True. If we walk away from God, we have the propensity of committing sin. True. Is, that's correct. Most Christians give, give God most of their heart, but hold back some. True or false? That's true. Unfortunately, God wants all of your heart, right? God, uh, what God wanted from Joash was absolute surrender. True or false? True, okay? Okay, it's okay to be lukewarm because God understands we're only human. Are you sure? The Bible said, Jesus said, I'd rather be by hot or cold, but don't be lukewarm or I'll spill you out of, right, my mouth. Okay, so we don't want to make God sick to his stomach, do we? Amen. Get the fire. I want the fire. Pray for one another to get the fire. Praise God. Amen. The Bible warns us in many places about growing cold. True or false? True. A person can never backslide or lose their way with God. Are you sure? You positive? You're right. Okay. Amen. Just checking. Praise the Lord. I like it when you know the Bible. A person can never back, uh, oh, excuse me, I already said read that. Drift away. According to the book of Hebrews, means floating past the place of safety. True. That's right. True. Floating past the place of safety, like coming into a harbor, and you miss the entrance to the harbor, right? It's, it's impossible for a Christian to have an evil heart of unbelief. True or false? It's true. It, it's impossible. I said it's impossible for a Christian. That's a trick question, wasn't it? So it is possible for a Christian to have a heart. An evil heart of unbelief. The Bible says that, okay? Okay, we are saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. True or false? True. That's called sanctification. The five foolish virgins made it to heaven. Huh? Help me out here. Are you sure? Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to behave myself tonight, okay? But some other lovely folks from a different denomination might argue with us. Okay? Uh, listen. Uh, the five foolish virgins. They didn't replenish their vessels, and so their lamps went out. True or false? The bridegroom said that he didn't know them. True or false? Didn't know them means 
He didn't recognize them. True. Okay. The truth is the five foolish virgins missed the rapture. True. Okay. Jehoiada was, in a sense, the restraining just as the Holy Spirit restrains us today. True. Uh, let's see. Uh, how old was Jehoiada when he died? 130 years old is correct. And what was the name of the temple restored? Do you remember the name of the temple restored? They called it what temple? It was whose temple? Yes, yeah, Solomon's temple. That's correct. Did I mention that last week? Did I get that far? Mm, I threw a zinger at you, didn't I? Okay, I thought I'd gotten that far. Maybe I didn't. Okay, all right, praise God. Heavenly Father, pray your blessing. Help us to teach thy word tonight. Give us hearts and ears to receive of the truth. The word, give us a hunger and an appetite. Spiritual hunger pains for God, for your presence, and to have a closer walk with you and to draw nearer unto you, God, and for the word of God to burn within our hearts. Oh, thank God. Thank you for the word. Father, we just ask your blessing. We thank you, Father, giving you all the glory, lifting up the holy and wonderful name of Jesus. We pray, and everybody said amen, and amen. Second Kings chapter 12, verse 2, Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada the priest instructed him. This means that all the days of Jehoiada, that is, while he was alive, amen, that he, that uh, that Joash uh, uh, did the right thing and uh, kept from doing that, which was wrong. And there, in a sense, as we said tonight, was a restraining just as the Holy Spirit restrains or convicts us of wrongdoing. And thank God that he does, amen. God deals with our hearts when we step outside of the boundaries or the perimeters of his will for our lives. And so that is a good thing. In fact, that's evidence that you belong to God. In fact, if you do something wrong or you sin against God and God and the Holy Ghost convicts you, praise God that he does. Someone comes to me sometimes say, Pastor, I feel bad because I did this. I said, praise God, you feel bad. That means the Holy Spirit is evident in your life. Amen. Yes, I know we feel bad and we shouldn't have done what we should have done, whatever it was, whatever sin, whatever stepping outside the will of God. I realize that, but thank God that he deals with us. Amen. Just like parents that will deal with their children when they do something wrong. The restraining factor is uh, the Holy Spirit, but one that we know the restraining factor will be removed, that is the Holy Ghost, and evil will have its way on this earth without measure. We talked about that, the seven-year tribulation. Thank God the church won't be here. Thank God we'll be with Jesus. Thank God we'll be with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But when Jehoiada died at 130 years old, okay, Joash turned from God, did evil on the side of the Lord. This, of course, brought judgment upon the people as well as himself. For this, God permitted a small band of Syrians to conquer a large army of Israel. We see that in 2 Chronicles chapter 24. If you want to know more about Joash and all of this, you can read 2 Chronicles chapter 24. Now, let me say this for a reminder tonight. Let me just share with you some of what we talked about last week. If we look at Jehoiada as a type of the Holy Ghost, one can say that as long as the Holy Spirit is there to lead, to guide, to teach, then spiritual righteousness will prevail. However, when the Holy Ghost is no longer present, or if the Holy Ghost is ignored or quenched uh, in that life, then spiritual declension will set in. In other words, there'll be a downward spiral spiritually. Okay, so it's very important. God instituted the church, and so there is the accountability. There's helping one another. There's encouraging one another. There's praying for one another, so that you don't lose the flame, you don't lose the fire, you don't lose the passion, you don't lose the desire for the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, it's my job, according to the Bible, to help encourage you to keep on keeping on. Hallelujah! Don't grow weary. Don't grow cold. Don't grow like a days ago. Don't become lukewarm. But be faithful and committed unto the Lord, unto His Word, unto His ministry, unto Him, unto His work unto his church. Amen. Praise God. Remember, God made up the church. God instituted the church for a body of believers to come together. Now, now the church began by depending on the Holy Ghost. 120 came out of the upper room. Remember that? Full of Holy Ghost and fire and power with total dependency upon the Spirit of God. They changed the known world. Amen. Nothing could stop them. Not the gates of hell could hold them back. Not the devil. Not Herod. Not the Pharisees or Sadducees or, or, or not Rome. Nobody could hold them back. But over time and through the centuries, the church, you'll notice, began to to drift away and uh, from the Spirit of God going deeper into sin and to worldliness. And today, the church has become mechanical. For the most part, it's become big business. The church, as I said, now has investors. It's become political. It has money, has all kinds of talent. But the church has never been more empty of God's power and God's presence. I didn't say the church didn't have talent. I didn't say the church didn't have noise. I said it's become empty of God's power, amen, and God's presence. I didn't say it didn't have a presence, but it doesn't have 
have the presence of the Lord. Amen. When the church had nothing but God, it had everything. But now that the church has everything but God, it has nothing like Samson, my friend. Amen. The spirit of the Lord has departed, and we know it not. Samson became just like other men. He lost God's presence and power and anointing. And when Samson was in that state of condition, he couldn't help anybody, not even himself. Okay. I praise God. Hallelujah. I pray that word of life, I can't answer for all the other churches, but I pray the word of life would be filled with God's spirit, filled with God's fire, filled with God's power, filled with God's word. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Can I encourage you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord? Get the fire. Get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. There's nobody that's holding you back except you. Don't let the world, don't let anybody else, don't let the devil hold you back from God. Amen. Get filled with Jesus. Be filled with his presence, his spirit, and his power, and his love. Amen. Amen. The church is in trouble and in dire need when it can no longer heal the sick or raise the dead or cast out devils or save the lost. But I think that's what the church ought to be doing. The church is in big trouble when it has to manufacture a Jesus or manufacture God's presence. That's right. Manufacture the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, we're going to manufacture the glory of God. No, you don't manufacture the glory of God. Either his glory falls or it doesn't. We want and hunger and desire for the glory of the Lord. Not a show, not entertainment, not faith, not false, but God. Not flesh, okay, but the Lord, but the Spirit of God. When we have reduced the baptism of the Holy Ghost to teaching people how to speak in tongues, we are in a deep spiritual decline. You don't teach somebody how to speak in tongues. It is a gift of inspiration. You do like the early church did. You lay hands on them and pray for them. Amen. When the Spirit of God falls on them, they'll speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Amen. You got proof for that? Yes. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Look at the Word of God. Joash had a strong and righteous beginning as king because he had a godly example to follow. How many know a godly example is important? Boy, I tell you what. I'm going to tell you something. Your faithfulness encourages me. Amen. And I would hope my faithfulness encourages you. In other words, we encourage one another. Our testimonies encourage one another. When God answers prayer, when God moves, when God speaks, when God fills, when God heals, amen, doesn't that encourage you? Praise God. Yes, it does. We need one another in the Lord God. Follow that godly example. Thank God for the Jehoiadas of today that show us by example how to live the godly life. It's people like Jehoiada that take the time to invest into others. Take time and invest into other people. I'm so thankful for those who took the time to invest into me. It made a huge difference in my life. Not only did they teach me the Word of God, but they showed me how to live the Word of God by their example. I can think of great teachers I had, great people in my life that God brought so that they could show me, amen, teach me the Word of God, but show me how to live the Word of the Lord. Now, one achievement in Joash's life that shines brightly is this. It is the restoration of of the temple of God. Now, the temple was Solomon's temple, okay? It was Solomon's temple. The temple was about 140 years old. Some, some theologians say it was about 100 years old. Some say it's about 120 years old. Some say it's about 140 years old. Listen, don't get all upset about that, okay? That's just a time frame that they're trying to figure out about how old the temple was. The fact was, it was over a century old. The fact is, it was old, okay? About 140 years old at this time, and for many years, it had been neglected and it was allowed to deteriorate. Now, why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because during the apostasy, now let me tell you, when people in apostasy, they don't care about God. They don't care about the things of God. They don't care about the ministry of the Lord. They don't care about God's church. They don't care about the temple. So during the apostasy, that is because of who? Queen Athaliah. Oh, we remember her. She's out now. Yeah, Queen Athaliah that led the people, the southern kingdoms, the southern tribes, led them into apostasy, into Baal worship. Okay, so because of that, in the false gods and false worship and idolatry, they had little interest in the Lord. They had little interest in God, little interest in the things of God, little interest in the temple or the church. They had little interest in the true worship of the one true living God, okay, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And as a result, the temple was in need of dire repairs. Now think about this. Think about it. It needed complete restoration. You know, just as Solomon's temple needed restoring, there are times that these temples need restoring, okay? We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us. God is a God, let me tell you this, of restoration. Now, the Bible says this in Psalm 23 and 3. It says, he restores my soul. David said that. Now, now I'm going to say this. God revives. God renews 
And God makes new again. Hallelujah. God has a way of doing that, okay? So to restore means to bring back to its original condition. I remember when I was living in Loosedale, Mississippi, okay? And I just moved out of my mom and, dad, mom and dad's house, and I got my own place. I got me a place to rent. It was a house out in the country. That's right, right around the southern border of the county, George County, where I used to live. And this house was in the middle of 80 acres. Now listen to this. My first house I rented, I rented for 150 bucks a month. $150 a month. It had kind of a stove there, you know, a, 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 a fireplace, I guess I want to say. And I had to put a wood in there, you know, to keep warm, things like that. And so I finally talked the owners into putting a gas stove in there, a gas heater. And so they raised the rent from 150 to 175 bucks a month. $175 a month, that's pretty good. You can't see that these days. You can't touch that these days. And so I used to work down there at Ingle Shipyard and draft and design and engineering and so forth. But uh, I, I was making $13 an hour, and I wanted a boat. I used to love to go skiing. I loved to go water skiing. And I'd slalom. Man. Anybody ever went water skiing before? Hey, man, I, I used to love water skiing. Oscar, man, I'd get, and I'd get a slalom, you know, and I'd try to get a 12-foot rooster, whatever it might be. I love to water ski. So I, since I love to water ski, I want to get my own boat. I'm going to get my own boat. Well, I couldn't afford a brand new boat, so I bought a used boat. I bought an old boat for $800. That's right. looks something like that. In fact, you see that trailer all rusted out and all that kind of thing? It almost looked just like that. So I bought that thing. motor didn't run, and I thought, I'm going to fix that thing up. So I took the boat off of the trailer, and I started from the bottom all the way up, and I put a new axle, new tires, and, and I painted the trailer. No, 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 no. Put that thing back. Put it back, Brother John. You're going too fast. Too fast. Too fast. I thought I preached fast, but you go too fast. Amen. So I'm... I, what do I do? I'm trying to restore this thing. And so I'm fixing, I'm painting the trailer, you know. And I put new tires and new bearings and new lights and all new wiring and everything like that. And I get that all new tongue on there and everything like that, okay. And I got the new ramps on there and all carpeted for the boat. Then I take the boat and I strip the thing down. I take the motor off. I put it in the shop. It has to be rebuilt. Foot has to be rebuilt. I put a stainless steel prop on there. On the inside, I gut the thing. That's right. And, uh, and I, I put wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. I built in compartments. I put a, a, an AM, FM cassette stereo system in the thing. Thing, and I painted it and I put a new windshield on that. See that windshield right there? It was curved just like that. And I found a place that would put a new windshield and, and mold it back to the boat. I had to have a new transom put in. I mean, I'm telling you, before it was over with, I had $4,500 in the boat. <laughs> Been better if I'd have went and bought a brand new boat. I had $4,500 in that boat. But you know what I did? The next picture, Brother John. Amen. Hallelujah. After that, it looked something like that. I mean, I tell you what, it looks sharp. It looked nice and the same kind of rims and everything. And, uh, and one of my friends says, uh, what are you going to call it? And I said, well, I don't know. He said, you know, he said, you need to name it Miracle Whip. You know, like the mayonnaise Miracle Whip. He said, you need to name it Miracle Whip because it's a miracle that that boat looks like it does. Amen. Man, I tell you what, that thing would purr like a kitten. That thing would run. Man, get on the water, go boom, 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 all over the place. I used to love it. Amen. Praise God. All right. So what did I do? I took time, but it restored it. Amen. So what am I saying? I'm saying that's what God does with us. God is a God of restoration. <laughs> Sometimes in this journey, we get weary, get tired. Have you ever been there? I sure have. There are times it might feel worn down, spiritually speaking. There are times we feel beat down. Perhaps we've lost our spiritual stamina. Ever been there, church? Man, sometimes it feels as if we've been traveling through the wilderness and the dry and parched land. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, pastor. Amen. But then suddenly what, what happened? The Lord shows up. See, God is not dead. He is alive. His spirit is alive. And God shows up. And God touches you. Praise God. And he blesses you with his presence. The Lord comes near and strengthens you. And you feel what? His presence. You feel the presence of the Lord. Just like tonight, I felt the presence of the Lord. I always feel strengthened and energized when I feel the presence of the Lord. I have been feeling this all day long today. Hallelujah. I was sick Monday. I was sick Tuesday. But today, praise God, I've been touched by the master, the presence of the Lord that strengthens you. Praise God. How was it that Elijah was able to run 25 miles past Ahab's char chariot to Jezreel? How was he able to do that? Not in his flesh, not in his own strength, amen. He did it in the might and the power of the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord carried him. The Lord took him. And the same Spirit, the same God, the same Holy Ghost can do that for you also. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have a dead, dry, dusty religious system here. We have the Lord. We have the Holy Ghost. 
Listen to me. I, I love my, my Baptist friends. I really do. But I'm telling you, they're missing out on some things here because of fear, because they won't look at the scriptures. Amen. But I used to be Baptist. I used to be Catholic, but now I'm Pentecostal. And I know the presence of God. I can feel the presence of God. I've encountered the Lord. I've encountered the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I've encountered the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've encountered many renewings and refreshings in my life. Listen to me, my friend. You get saved, that's wonderful. Hallelujah. You need to get saved. But also, there are many continual renewings and revealings and refreshings. And you need that in this journey with the Lord. You need this in this walk with God. Because we do get tired. We do get weary. We do. Amen. All right, so God comes, he washes all over you, right? He touches you. The presence of God, sometimes he comes unexpectedly. Remember we talked about that Sunday night? How the presence of God can come unexpectedly. It can come in the wilderness. It can come in the desert. It can come when you're driving down your car, driving your car down the road. It can come in the kitchen. It can come at work, wherever, hallelujah. God does that to help you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to bless you, to renew you, and to revive you. Listen, church, we need reviving. Word of life needs renewing and reviving. We say, well, we're going to have revival because we have special services. Well, I hope we have revival. I hope we have revival. People say, well, we're going to have healing time. I hope that God heals. We're going to have baptism in the Holy Ghost time. I hope he baptizes in the Holy Ghost. In other words, you don't dictate what God does. What you can do is humble yourself to the Lord and pray that God would heal. Pray that God would baptize in the Holy Ghost. Pray that God would deliver. Pray that God would save. Pray that God would set you free. I mean, you can pray and ask God to do these things. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So what does God do? He comes and he touches you, cleanses you. Of all unrighteousness and your sin, suddenly you feel renewed and revived and strengthened. Now, have you ever been times when you just felt down? You felt beat down? And, uh, and all of a sudden, the Lord shows up. It is, I mean, the presence of God, the, like the, almost like the Shekinah glory of the Lord shows up. And tears begin to just go down your cheeks. And you feel the presence of the Lord. And, uh, and you're just weeping before God and you're confessing your faults. You're confessing your sins. The Holy Ghost is bringing those things to your heart, your mind. And so as he does, you're saying, oh, God, I'm sorry for my pride. Or I'm sorry for this. Or I'm sorry for that. And you, you're just, he's washing all over you. And you spend time in the presence of the Lord. And tears are going down your cheeks. Hallelujah. After some time, you, you get up from the altar or whatever. And you feel renewed. You feel refreshed. He's like, oh, hallelujah. You say, oh, thank you, Jesus, because I needed that. Yeah, I know, man. I tell you what, I don't know what it was, but, you know, when I was a kid, I got lots of spankings, lots. And, uh, and I was a good kid. <laughs> I was one of those kids that, that I would be the last person anybody would ever think would be a preacher. Amen. I was one of those kids. That's why, that's why it's the least expected people are the ones that God calls. Sister Jackie. Well, I wasn't as bad as your sister, but I was bad, okay? <laughs> I love the both of them, okay? So, so the fact is, and so I got a lot of spankings, you know? But when I was in trouble, I was kind of like hiding, you know? Hiding from my, my mom because I didn't want her to find out. And so, so there was this something between me and my mom. So I'm not acting right, okay? She knows it. She picks up on things, whatever. So, you know, you know, you know you're trying to hide and sneak and all this kind of thing. Or maybe you lied. Or then you got to tell another lie to cover the lie. You said, nah, 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 and all that kind of thing, right? So there's this between mom and me, and I don't like that. And so finally she calls me out on it. She catches me. And so then she says, okay, well, now you're going to be grounded or you're going to get a spanking. So she gave me a spanking, okay? Either grounding or a spanking, sometimes both. Usually it was both, okay? And so, but afterwards the spanking was over. It was like I felt really close to my mom. After the spanking, after it was done, I was like, man, I'm glad she did that. Not that I was glad she did that, but I'm glad that's out in the air. I'm glad that's out in the open. I'm glad there's nothing between you and me, mom. Everything's good. Everything is open. There's no secrets. There are no lies. And so I felt good. I felt good. I felt happy. I felt like I wanted my mom to buy me a toy or something. You know, I just felt really good. Well, listen to me. When you get it out in the open with God, when God deals with you, hallelujah, and God convicts you and you repent of that and you confess it to the Lord and then God forgives you and washes you with his presence and his glory, you come up, he said, oh, I feel renewed. I feel refreshed. I feel good because there's nothing between me and God. Hallelujah. That sin is gone. That's exactly what happens. Amen. Amen. All right. So, so, a, so one touch from God makes all the difference. What's God doing? Well, he's restoring you, renewing you, reviving you, the spirit man, strengthening you. Isaiah 50, uh, 35 and 6. Isaiah 35 and 6. Look at this. For, for waters shall burst forth in the wilderness. In where? The wilderness. Waters, waters will burst forth in a dry place. In a wilderness, amen. In a lonely place, in a dry place, that's where the water comes. I like this. 
and streams in the desert. Where are the streams at? In the desert. Praise God. You know, I think about uh, Samson when he fought the thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey, which is pretty miraculous in itself, you know. And so after that, he's like, he was so thirsty he was going to die. He said, oh, Lord, he said, man, am I, I, you know, after, I'm, 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 I'm so thirsty, I'm going to perish, I'm going to die. And so God split a hollow place and water came up and Samson drank of that. The Bible says he was revived. Hallelujah. Oh, how many know that God will give you a drink? Hallelujah. You might be thirsty. You might be weary. You might be lonely. You might be dry. But God will show up and he will bless you with his presence. He'll give you a drink of water spiritually that will renew you sometimes we just need God one touch from God it makes all the difference and when we have a genuine touch from God you can say he restores my soul God is reviving me God is renewing me he'll put a song in your heart he'll put a kick in your step he's a God of restoration and there's times we just need restoring and we need refreshing oh praise God 2 Corinthians 4 and 16 therefore we do not lose heart amen don't give up don't quit don't lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. Amen, Pastor. Amen, Pastor. Boy, I tell you what, I got gray hair. Amen. I'm losing hair. I got wrinkles. My joints and bones, you know. You know how it is. I can't run like I used to run. <laughs> can't do like I used to do. But, you know, the outward man is perishing. The outward man's getting older. But you know what? It says the inward man. Now, can you say the spirit man? The spirit man. The inward man. That's you. Is being renewed day by day. It's like, it's like you're not getting any older. You feel the same. The outward man feels older. Oh, man, it's like ah, my back or my knee or, or my elbow or my elbow or my shoulder or my shoulder. I'm just <laughs> yeah, Brother Scott. Hey, man. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hallelujah. But the inward man feels the same. The inward man didn't get any older. Praise God. Why? Because the inward man is eternal. You are eternal. You're going to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, either in heaven or in hell, but you're going to live forever. The, the inside, the inner man, that's who you are, your character, that's who you are. You're going to live forever and ever and ever. Guess what? I've got good news for you. One day, God's going to redeem all this back to himself. You're going to get a new body, a glorified body. Hallelujah. That can go the distance. That'll never weary, never get tired, never grow old, never have wrinkles, and never have gray hair. Praise God. Amen. So God gives us while on this earth just a taste of what that's yet to come. Just a taste of heaven. Just a taste of his presence. Just a taste of his love. Amen. Think, about, think about being in God's presence in fullness without this body suit or this tent or this tabernacle, you know, hindering us, you know. You know, we get, we're hindered by these things, you know. I mean, we're hindered. We're, one day we won't be hindered. Right now we're hindered, you know. We look through a glass dimly right now, but one day face to face. So we're hindered in some sense. I mean, for instance, uh, if you have the flu, whenever I have the flu, I can't feel the presence of God. When I have the flu, it's hard to pray. Whenever I have the flu, it's hard to read. You ever try to read the Bible when you have the flu? He said, well, I can't comprehend. So he said, well, I'll put on CDs. So I listen, I can't hear nothing. I got a fever, whatever it is, right? That's right, because we're hindered. We're limited by this body. But one day, we'll be in God's presence and fullness. We will not be hindered. And we will encounter the glory of God. And we will live forever and eternity in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says renewed. Now, the word renewed in the Greek is anakino. Anna Kaino. See right there? That's Anna Kaino. And, uh, and, uh, and, it, and it, means, it means to renew, but I like this, renovate. It means to renew, but it also means to renovate. I love this. Now, hey, hallelujah. Some of us need to be renovated. Some of us need to renovate. <laughs> you mean to be put in the shop. <laughs> Renovated. Now, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is so good. See, God wants to do a complete renovation of you. The Lord will renew and revive you, but he'll re renovate you. Okay, so what do you do? So it's like your house. It's like my house is like, uh, my house was built in two, 2000, 1911. My house was built in 1911. What is this right now, 2024? So it's like over 100 years old, right? So think about how old it is. The house is old. And so, you know, you know, after a while you say, well, you know, the house needs some updating, you know. So what do you do? You go out and you buy some new paint. And you paint the walls. And then you paint all the trim. And you put new carpet in. You put new windows in. You put no flooring in. You get some new appliances. You get some new furniture. Same old house, but it's all renewed. It's been renovated. It's been revived. It's like new. And that's what God does with you and I. Hallelujah. Some of us need to do paint job. Hallelujah. That's right. Some of us need some new carpet, new windows. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about? Same old house. 
but it looks new. And so you sit in there and you go, ah, drinking your hot cup, cup of coffee or a glass of iced tea. And you say, isn't this nice? It looks so pretty and it's so clean and the carpet and the new paint and the new smell of paint and, and the new windows that I can see out the window. Same old house. But it's been renovated. And that's what God does us spiritually. He renovates you. Praise God. He puts in new flooring, new carpet, new windows, and, and new appliances. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord helps you and strengthens you to help you along the way. Amen. Isaiah 14, 31. But those that wait upon the Lord, that means waiting with hope and expectation, shall renew. Renew. Can you say the word renew? Help me out, church. Renew what? Their strength. There it is. That's an inner strength, a spiritual inner strength that you receive of God. It is supernatural. Come on, church. You can have this. You can encounter this. You can experience this how many times? Daily in your lives. You can have this daily in your lives. Amen. It says they shall mount up with wings like eagles. All right, y'all stand on the back of your chairs now. We're going to perch up here. <laughs> Come on now. All right, start the back first. Okay, Jackie. Yeah, okay, you first. Okay, Sister Marsha. You go. Hallelujah. Kim, don't talk about it. We're going to perch up. <laughs> Can you catch me? You ready? We're going we're gonna to mount up with wings like eagles. We're going to run and not grow weary. We're going to walk and not faint. In other words, what does that mean? It means you're going to go the distance. It means this. It means there she goes. And there she goes. She keeps on going. Keeps on going. Keeps on going. Keeps on. It's like this. You become like the Energizer Bunny. Remember that? The Energizer Bunny. They still have that, that silly commercial. The same old thing. Energizer batteries. You know that? The Energizer. He's beating the drum, right? Still doing it? Is he still beating the drum? He still, he is. He's still going. <laughs> All these years, I mean, after decades and decades, that crazy little Energizer Bunny keeps on going. They're trying to let you know that this battery never runs out, apparently, or goes the distance. See, God will give you the strength. He'll revive you. He'll renovate you. He'll renew you. Why? So that you won't quit like Joash and you will go the distance. That's why. He cares about you. He doesn't want you to quit. He doesn't want you to give up. He doesn't want you to be discouraged. What do you think God wants to do with this church? I'm going to tell you something. God has his hand on this church. Don't think he doesn't. He has shown us over the past 24 years that God has his hand on this church through hell or high water. Come or go, this church stands. Thank God. Yeah. I cannot boast in myself. It is only God. It is only the Lord. It's not me because of, if I check out, God will put somebody else in my place. Amen. When I say check out, I mean go to heaven. <laughs> when I go to heaven, there was one song. There was one song I was singing the other day. Oh, it's a song I can't remember. It wasn't like Brother Scott singing when he came out of surgery last night. It wasn't that one, but it was something like that. Amen. Oh. But something like that. He was, he was singing about a meeting in the air. I don't, uh, this, this song here has something to do with robes. I can't remember what it was. Oh, whatever it was. Man, I tell you what, the presence of God. My wife and I were in the car, you know, and uh, the, the, that thought, the song came on. We're, we're praising God. We're just shouting the glory down. Hallelujah. I said, that song right there. I said, when I check out, I said, I want you to play that song, and I want all the church to sing with it. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, my friend. It'll be a celebration. I will be in the presence of God. I wouldn't come back if you asked me. I'm staying there. Oh, praise the Lord. I miss you, but I know you'll be there soon. Maybe sooner than you think. <laughs> Amen. You're, huh? Yeah, you're gonna be. You might not. You might not. You might. You might not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. She's right there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, look at look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Psalm twenty three and four. He says, "Help me out here." What does it say? He restores what by what? My soul. Okay. So the word restore gives us the idea of restoring from disorder and decay. Is this world not disorder and decay? It means that to restore from sorrow and affliction. In this world full of sorrow and affliction? Yeah. Uh, to sit upright. That's the idea. It means uh, to restore back to its original condition. That's what I was trying to do with that speedboat of mine. I had a 1971 Dodge Demon. Did the same thing. But I'll talk about that another time, okay? Did the same thing, okay? And so praise God. I mean, that, that was amazing. But nonetheless, that's what I was trying to do with that boat, okay? Trying to restore it back to its original condition. Sometimes the sheep would be turned over on its back. And had no way of getting back up. Just like that. Now, listen, that's it. All right? Hallelujah. Hey, don't laugh. That could be you. <laughs> that could be some of the church right there. That's right, sheep. Uh-huh. Sheep. All right? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And I, he says, hear my voice and I know them. Amen? And they follow me. Okay, so, so sometimes the sheep be turned over its back and had no way of getting up. That sheep has no way of getting up on its own. And it would be lodged sometimes in the cleft or crevices of the mountains or the hills. And it would get stuck. If it stayed like that position too long, it would die. 
uh, another animal, a wolf or a coyote, would come and kill it, that, that sheep will die if it stays in that position. I want you to know something. If it stays in that position, it will die. Amen. Okay? Now, the shepherd would come along with a staff. Can you hold up your Bible? Okay, that's a type of the staff right there. <laughs> right? And the shepherd would come along with a staff, and there's a hook on the end of it. I got to get a hook on this baby. They have a hook on the end of it. And when they're turned over like that, they would take the staff with the hook on the end of it, and they'd grab a hold of that sheep. Right? they grab a... They, 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 that's what they do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what they... I better not. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> hey, Brother Clint, I, I hit you. Okay. They take the word of God, and they, in other words, he would take that hook, and he would grab the neck of that sheep and pull it up and then grab a hold of it and then flip it over to where it's back on all fours. That's what it means to be restored. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you something. You know what I see most of the church doing today? <laughs> And the pastor is trying to hook them. <laughs> the pastor's trying to hook you, trying to hook you to flip you upright. Yeah. Amen. Come on. So that you can be restored. Hallelujah. That's what God does with us. Praise the name of the Lord. So that you won't die. So that you won't lose your way. So that you won't lose your soul. So that you won't lose. Amen. But you'll gain. Hallelujah. That's what God does. God will put you back to your intended purpose. And position. Oh, amen. I love that. Oh, man. It's been a long time since I preached that, huh, sister? That's been way back. That's way back in the early days. I had, I had brown hair. I had hair. I was back in the beginning days. I got to redo that. I, it's been a long time. I need to do a series on Psalm 23. It's been a long time. I'm sure I've learned some things since then. Okay, so, so, so this is what happened. So, you know, um, uh, Joe Ash started out right, and, and he had a heart to serve the, serve the Lord and, uh, and uh, a heart to restore the temple of God. And, and under the influence and counsel of the, of the high priest Jehoiada, Joe Ash ordered certain monies to be collected for the repairs. Okay, give me a few more minutes, all right? And his plan was to have the priests set aside a part of the dedicated silver that they received in offerings from the people to repair whatever damage was found to the temple. And remember now, we're talking about 140 years old. Now, that's a noble thing to do. The temple needed some TLC, tender love and care. Now, unfortunately, the plan didn't work because the priest didn't follow through. Now, now apparently some of the monies was taken and used for personal use rather than for repairs on the temple. And so, in other words, some people were dipping their hands in the offering plate. They were stealing it rather than using it for the funds that it was intended for, Okay. And, and this is why it's very important. Let me, let me tell you this. This is why it's important to have integrity and accountability in the church. And we have that in this church. And I'm thankful for that. We have accountability. And I love accountability. And we have integrity in this church. You know why? Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. And they know. This, this couple right here knows exactly the first time when it happened to them. When they had $10,000 stolen from them. $10,000 was stolen from them because they trusted somebody that was not trustworthy. Okay? It's not their fault. Okay? But this happened to them. Thank God they're still serving God. Thank God they're still in the church. So what happens is, what happens is, is, is that we have accountability. So what do I mean by that? Well, Sister Alberta, she collects all the money out of the baskets and everything, and she takes it in the office, and her and my wife go in there, and they count it up together, okay? They help each other out, and they put all that, whatever they do, and make all the deposit slips and everything like that. And then she sticks it, she sticks it in the bag and then gives, puts it on my chair and says, okay, deposit that the next day. And they say, okay. And then Mimi comes in, Miriam comes in the next day on Monday, and she goes in there. There's another part-time secretary. She's got one part-time secretary, another part-time secretary. And she goes in there, and she does all the debit cards and credit cards and all those receipts and she takes care of all that and she deposits all that and she, she records all that and then she files it away. So when I come into the office, you know what I have? I just have a total tally of tithes and offerings, missions and building. That's all I see. Now if I want to probe, I can probe. I have the ability to do that. But I try not to because I really don't want to know, okay? I really don't want to know. I just know this. God is faithful and I pray that God's people will be faithful. But there's accountability. And so at the end of the year, just like we're at right now, so it's now, this is the time since Alberta starts spitting off all kinds of things in the paper and all, all the kind of things from the, all the whole year of 2023. And all I'll take all that, and I'll say, okay, all expenses, all that, show all the expenses, how much we brought, how much we spent, what we did, and what we spent on, and I take all that information, and I take it to a board meeting, and I show the board. The board says, okay, where is all the money going, and all this kind of thing. So I explain to them all the different categories of where the money was spent, and why it was spent, and what we did with it. 
That's accountability. And the board says, okay, now, if they agree with that and they're okay with that, they don't really have any major questions about that, they say, okay, we're going to put it to a vote. Do we accept it? And uh, the board so far, by the grace of God, has said yes. But they do have questions. And I have no problem answering those questions. No, listen, I have no problem. Sometimes I don't remember. And I say, you know what? I have to get back to you on that one. And you can ask any of the board members. I will get back with them as soon as I can. And I will text them. And I will tell them, okay, this was for this, this for this, this for this. And they said, it's okay. We trust you. But you know what? I like being trusted. And I like accountability. And I like being able to show the people and tell the people what we're doing here. Because why? Because I have nothing to hide here at Word of Life Christian Center. Praise God. Everything's above table. I answer to God and I answer to you people that support the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this church and this ministry. Isn't that right? right. It's the right way to do it. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Now, for instance... On little things, they say that the board gives you, you, get like, you, got, you have liberty. The little things that you have to purchase, in this, we trust it, you take care of that. But the bigger things, you have to go to the board and get approval. For instance, these chairs. I just didn't go, couldn't go and buy the chairs. It took me five years to get approval for these chairs. I kid you not. I love the board. They all like the pews, but I was ready for chairs. And they said, five years. It was five years. Sister Laura C. said, time, be patient, and time, and time, and time, and time. I said, sister, it's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. My wife, too, couldn't get her on there. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you don't have your wife backing up on something. You'll never get it done. Everybody will follow her. Amen. So I had to wait and wait and pray and wait and fast and almost, you know, I mean, I'm telling you, pray and asking God. <laughs> And then the time was right. And get this. Then the time came. And they said yes. And they gave me approval. I said, oh, hallelujah. I was excited, Terry. Man, ha, yes. We're going to be able to get the chairs. Praise God. And then God said, God said, hold it. God said, hold it. All of a sudden, I lost the peace of God about it. Another situation, another situation came up, and so we put the brakes on, and, and, uh, and that, that, that fell through. So we just let that go. But nonetheless, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a piece about it. So five months. Oscar, five months. Five months. Come on in, kids, okay? Five months. I'm almost done, okay? Unless you want me to finish the story next week. Five months went by. Five months. And uh, I was going to get the burgundy chairs. You see this one right here? You see this one right here? All right? Praise God. I was going to get this color chair right here. And yeah, I let y'all, I even brought this out, amen, one time, you know, I, I don't know what it was, a board meeting or something, I had this sitting out there for them to come and to sit down and to check it out, you know. I was like, I'm trying to get these chairs. And, uh, and so I had this color picked out, this is the chair we're going to get and everything like that. And then, and then, and then after I had approval, all of a sudden I lost the peace of God. So I said, hold it, Trevor. I said, I stopped. I waited till about five months later. And, uh, and my daughter came up to me one Sunday and she says, Mr. Malden, she says, uh, you don't want to go with burgundy. I said, I don't. She goes, no. She says, you want to go with a neutral color so that you can change the colors in the church. You're not stuck with just one color. I said, I do. She says, yeah. I go, oh, I didn't think of that. So she, I, I showed her these colors, and it was this one right here. She said, this color, you can paint the walls. You can change the carpet. You can do this and do this and do this. You're not stuck with just one color. And when she said that, all of a sudden, I got the green light, and the peace of God came into my heart. And that was it. I'm glad we didn't waste the money and get the wrong color. And so they said, well, it's a different type of chair that you're going to get that color in. It's going to take longer. It's worth the, hey, what would you say? Ha, 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 get up here. What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying this. I'm saying it's worth the wait when you wait, when you learn to wait on the Lord and do it God's way. God will bless you. That's just like one of many examples I can give you. But listen, God will bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, some of the people are dipping their hand in the, in the, in the, in the, in the tithe, you know, tray in the back, whatever. And, uh, and uh, they were stealing or the offering plate. And so, and so it was like this. And so. It's very important to have integrity and accountability in the church. Now, so by the 23rd year of his reign, Joash, okay, Joash got exasperated. I guess you could say he was frustrated, annoyed because the work wasn't done yet. Now, come on, folks, 23 years. I'm getting impatient now. Man, I, I, I'm, I'm ready to build this thing, okay? And, and we thank God we got some breakthroughs today. But you know what? I'm, 23 years went by, almost two and a half decades went by. Uh, no work on the temple. And so he called Jehoiada, Jehoiada, Jehoiada and the other priest on the carpet for the lack of progress. And he basically told them to forget the original plan. He's going to implement a new plan. This time the king had a box installed at the altar with a hole cut in the lid. 
And it was set up just inside the temple on the right-hand side. So when the people walked in through the front doors of the temple, they would give by putting money in the box. Okay? They would give by putting money in the box. And, and get this. And so the scripture says, and all the money that a man purposes in his heart. Now I want you to circle in verse 4, chapter 12, purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord. Now, now I'm going to say this. and I'm going to quit. And I'll pick up on this when we come, when we come back next week, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you love the word of God? Don't you just love Jesus? Don't you, God, girls, don't you love Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, now get this. Now, it's very, very important that we give to the Lord and we give to the work of God. Would you say amen to that? I'm not going to get into tithing tonight, okay? I'll talk a little bit about next Wednesday. But I just want to say this, that if you love God, then you'll care about his church and you'll care about the gospel, and you'll care about the ministry of God. Would you say amen to that? Amen. You'll believe in the gospel, you'll believe in the cause, and you'll want to support it. And you believe, and you believe that Jesus is the only answer. You know that he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. You believe in the message of the gospel to save and to deliver and to set free. You know it's the only answer. So if it's the only answer, why not get involved? Why not participate? And why not support it? And why not tithe? Because you can be involved or part of saving the lost out there that doesn't know Jesus. How will they hear without a preacher? Unless a preacher is sent. Amen? Praise God. All right. Man, I got excited tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about this a little bit because I want to talk about a law. I want to talk about a law. The law is called sowing and reaping. Okay, and I'm telling you, you don't want to miss next week. You don't want to miss. This ought to encourage you. Hey, man, this is going to bless you. This ought to encourage you. But you don't want to miss. God has been so faithful. He's been faithful to you, and he's been way more faithful to us than we have been to him. And I put myself in the lot with you. He's been so, listen, he is an on-time God. He's faithful. Hey, Amen. He's Lord, and my God will provide. And that word will not lie. Amen. You sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. And when Jesus talked about them, the farmers, they knew what he was talking about. All right? Now, as I close tonight, if I sow 10 seeds, how much am I going to reap? 10 seeds worth. But if I sow, Terry, if I sow 1,000 seeds, ooh, ooh. It's also a thousand seeds worth. Isn't that cool? Isn't that good? Put your faith and trust in God. Listen, I pray that chapter 12 is coming alive to you. I'm already in chapter 13. Mm, that's interesting too. Let's stand together tonight, okay? Praise God. Can we give God glory in this house? Can we love the Lord and praise his holy, holy, wonderful name? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord God who is so, 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 so good. God is so good. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship with me tonight, church, and just cry out to God and shout hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. And praise the Lord, and we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I want, I want to draw closer to God. I want to know the Lord. I want to know the voice of God. I want to know his spirit. I want to know his presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. You might be here tonight. You say, Pastor, I just need to be revived. I need to be renewed in the Holy Ghost. I need to be revived and renewed in the Holy Spirit. I want to be renovated, hallelujah, by God. I want the Lord to do this in my life. Just raise your hand. Say, that's me, Pastor. That's me. Hallelujah. That's me, Pastor. Praise God. Lord, I'm asking you to revive the body of Christ. I'm asking you to renew my brothers and sisters in the Holy Ghost. Renew them in the Spirit, Father. I pour, pray that you'll pour out your Spirit upon them. A renewing and a refreshing in their hearts and their lives. Hallelujah. Maybe when they're driving down the road in their car. Maybe at work. Maybe in their house. Wherever it may be, God. You might wake them up in the middle of the night and pour out the Holy Spirit upon them and renew and revive them and I pray for that God in the name of Jesus church get the Holy Ghost get the fire be renovated be revived be renewed oh God do the renovation oh God put a new carpet new paint new doors new appliances new windows put it in God I pray 
Hallelujah. Do something wonderful at Word of Life. Do something wonderful in this church, mighty God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, church, listen. You, praise God, you reach out. Reach out your hand to these children. Pray for them. In the name of Jesus, we pray for these children. That they would know God. That they would be born again. That they would be saved. They would have a personal relationship with Christ. They would know Jesus. I pray that we're able to deposit Christ into them. And to teach them about the Lord. And his will and his love for their lives, oh God. I pray, Father, for them. Thank you, Lord, almighty God. Save them. Do this work, God. Touch this city. Bring revival to the word of life. Bring revival to this city, God. Turn it upside down. Change it, oh God. Save to the uttermost, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We commit it all to you tonight. Thank you for everyone here. Bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. <laughs> well, glory. Let them hear you pray. Let them hear you cry out to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good.